My name is Jalen Neal. I'm 20 years of age and I play for LA Galaxy in the US Men's National Team. So I remember one game when he was a peewee, so he was like three or four, and he passed back to the keeper. And the parents went crazy. He's going the wrong way. And I'm like, no, he's doing what he's supposed to do. So I think from a young age, from watching his brother and watching soccer on TV, he had just that knowledge from an early age. Jalen was five years old and uh, he come out to the skills night and, you know, instantly we're looking, we're looking for kids that show some promise, some talent, some coachability. And, and there was Jalen uh, right in front of us. And I, I think a couple of us coaches said straight away that this is, we got to get this kid into the club. I think they saw his work ethic, his uh, love for the game, his competitive drive, his all around game, and that he just loves the game, period. When we were first approached when he was five to join club, I immediately said, absolutely not. I was not going to put a five-year-old in club, pay all that money, you know, he was a baby. Once I got there, it was obviously better players and like better kids, so I was like, I must be somewhat good if, you know, they want me to play for their team. And I was playing on a team that was older than me. Quickly, I saw that he, fit in well. He played up a few years and he played just like those boys did. So I saw that, that he had that understanding and it was, it was worth it. On the pitch, it, it took a long time for him to, to be more vocal. I think he, that was a, a criticism of a lot of the coaches was everything else was great, but he needed to be more vocal. Well, I, I, I always thought he, he was, he was a well-mannered, polite, but quiet if you like. I mean, I think that came from him being so young and at that time so skinny and small and he hadn't developed yet. Um, so he needed to get that inner confidence. He was that timid kid on the field who didn't, he didn't talk. He wouldn't say much. He just did a little work. He wasn't that aggressive, but he just kept working at it. He kept working at it. To watch him grow into that player was, was amazing because I knew he had it in him. Like I said, he's gone from being quiet and he's part of a group of players and, and um, it was good to see. Uh, off the pitch, it was a challenge for me as a parent. At one point, he was playing pre-academy and academy. So we were five days a week in Manhattan Beach at practice. We were either in Carson, Manhattan Beach. So I'd pick him up, my two little ones were babies, pick him up, dinner would be in Tupperware, He'd do his homework in the car, we'd go to practice, sit there, wait for him, come back, do it again the next day, games all weekend. You want them to retain that sense of being a child and not miss out on stuff, but reality is he did, he missed out on a lot. He didn't get to do the traditional prom and senior activities and, and just those types of those things. But it was his choice and his sacrifice. So we basically come in at five or six, and then he, uh, he stayed with us, I think it was till 12, maybe 13, and then uh, he, he kind of outgrown us. You know, he needed a new challenge, needed to be around players that like his own ability, and then um, uh, the galaxy coming for him. From what I remember, every waking moment was him breathing soccer, you know, living soccer, just everything surrounded by soccer. It honestly, like sometimes I think about it and it's like, it just went by so fast. And it's like, we didn't, I didn't have enough time to see like the full development. Like, I feel like I, he was just at FC Long Beach and now he's playing with the Galaxy. Like it's just, time flies. I mean, I'll be honest, like I, I've never really been the type of person to like show too much emotion towards something. So when I did, when I did get it, I was reading it and I was like, nice, okay. Like, I mean, it wasn't, because I was, I was kind of like expecting it for like the previous month or two. You know, there had been talks with my agent and um, the general manager at the time. And, you know, I was kind of expecting it like any day at that point. Um, and, you know, I already had, you know, a plan after that, you know, like I can't let this be my last, my first and last contract, you know. I have to, you know, work even harder after this. So, I mean, that's what I was doing right as I got that, you know, it was, you know, back to the regularly scheduled program. Like you said, we, we kind of knew it was coming, but that didn't prepare me for, see, I'm gonna get emotional now, uh, <laughs> for the emotion. I mean, it's your child, and they're now achieving their dream at, he was 16, and, and we were in the middle of a pandemic at that. So for him to 
For Galaxy to value him enough to offer him that contract was just amazing to me. Um, I was way, I showed way more emotion than he did, but <laughs> I know he was just as excited. And just to see him work so hard all these years, all these years keep working and working and working. And he's, he's not gonna stop until he gets to where he wants to be. Oh my God. I was the one who got bullied. Achieving what he's achieved in that young time and being the age that he is, he had to grow up really quickly. So, you know, he's super professional, super calm, level-headed, and a lot of people use the word shy when they first meet him. You know, like I've run up around some of my other friends and they're like, oh, he's super shy. But it's just like, I see it as he doesn't, he doesn't know you like that yet, he hasn't gotten to know you, but when he's around with his core group, you know, his family, his friends, he's very like, He's the one cracking the jokes, he's the one making us laugh, and like you wouldn't expect it. So it's just funny when you encounter someone that doesn't really know him that well, and they're saying, oh yeah, Jalen Neal, like he's super shy, he's super quiet, he's super reserved, and we're all like, well, like behind closed doors, he's actually really funny, he's loud, and you know, he's the one that like, makes the jokes and makes the group laugh, so. Speaking Spanish just doesn't sound like He's forcing himself to do it. He's forcing himself to do it. Bring it to the visa. I really the weekend speak Spanish. <laughs> and the road to 2026 begins here in LA as the US men's national team kicks off the new year here against Serbia. Jalen Neal, just 19 years old, hasn't even made his MLS debut yet for LA Galaxy as uh, he plays at the back tonight. Uh, not many better players to be alongside at the back than someone like Walker Zimmerman, who is captain of the U.S. tonight for the seventh time. So with the first call-up with USA, that one too I was I was kind of expecting just because the year before I had gotten a call from Greg Berhalter, you're invited to this January camp. But at that time I was dealing with um, like a small injury, like a small off-season knock, so I couldn't, couldn't participate. So this next January camp, I was aware that, you know, these January camps, they like to give opportunities out. And, you know, my name was being thrown out there a lot, so I was kind of hoping and expecting it. And then it ended up happening, and I think that first game against Serbia was, like, the most nerves I felt in a while before a game. Like, usually, usually I'm able to sense that I'm nervous, but, like, feel that it's normal, but this one was not normal. Like, I had to really calm myself down before the game, especially in warm-ups. But once, I think once the whistle, once the whistle goes off and, you know, the game starts going and things start moving, the nerves go away. So after that, it was just crazy to, like, be in the back line with, like, Walker Zimmerman or be next to Dewan Jones, just people on different teams. But it was like getting that sense of, like, you're in the top pool of players for your country. So, you know, you really got to, take that in and, you know, go further with this. Jalen Neal, 19 years old, hasn't even made a MLS debut yet for LA Galaxy as uh, he plays at the back tonight. Listen, our goal is when the ball is moving fast. Okay, so let's get it on the ground. I hear the field is nice. Let's the ball moving amongst each other. Let's get this game going fast and let's see if they can keep up with us. Huh? Enjoy yourself. I had no idea that he was going to debut. I remember sitting on the couch and, and just watching the game and then all of a sudden I saw him like, oh my god, I think he's going in. They're talking to him. Oh my god. And just like, I went numb. I remember him getting on the pitch and it was just an amazing feeling. Just like, it didn't seem real at first. Like, Seeing our last name, seeing him on the pitch and on TV, I was like, this is something that I never thought would happen. Because, I mean, it's always a dream, but it's like, it's hard to really envision it. And then I got a text from a bunch of my friends, everyone just like, yo, is that your brother? Is that really your brother on the team? This and that. I was like, yeah, man. Like, it's really him. He's doing it. And then the nerves set in. Nobody could talk to me. Nobody was allowed to look at me. I was hyper-focused on, on the screen. But it was, it was amazing. You can't, you can't put that moment into words. It's just the feeling you have and to see your son, all those things he worked for, and it finally comes true and he's out there playing with some of the guys he looked up to. So changes are being made now. Jalen Neal, a homegrown defender who Greg Vanny raved about in our conversation with him this week has come into the game. And so has Daniel Aguirre. 
No, it was crazy though, um, getting called to go warm up. And then, you know, once you're, once you're in that warm up spot, you know, you're looking towards the bench to see if the coach is gonna look at you and call you over. And then, um, so they have these like walkie talkies almost. So the coaches from the bench can tell the trainer, you know, get a player, take him to the bench. And so when I heard, or when I saw the trainer like listening to it, I was like, oh, it's, it's gonna be me, I feel it. And he was like, Jalen, go. And oh, it was like so, like I'm getting chills right now. Like, just being able to step on an MLS field with other MLS players, it was like, you're finally here. Like, but now you have to establish yourself. So just that game, I didn't let my emotions get to me, you know, try to keep it cool. And then, yeah, the next game I got my first start at um, Kansas City. And that, that was even better to finally witness and play under a, you know, a full 90 under an MLS environment. It was, um, it was eye-opening for sure because, I mean, those environments are so different from USL. Like, some USL fan bases are, like, super loud, but these ones you can't even hear 20 yards away from you. But I, I love it, though. It's a, it's a great challenge for me, and that's why I like it so much. He finally got to that first step. You know, for years, Jalen would write on a piece of paper every year and tape it to his wall in his bedroom that he was going to be a professional athlete and now he can check that off of his list. Caceres, Edwards, the volley! Dry spilled it, and it's in! It is Jalen Neal! His first MLS goal brings LA back into this match! It's 2-1! Have you got to see your mom yet? Yeah, I just saw her right before this action. What, what was her reaction to uh, your goal? Uh, she, told, she told me she can't even really remember the goal because she blacked out. I remember watching it and thinking, oh my God, he's going to score. And then my daughter was grabbing onto me and we just went wild. I was hoarse the next day. We were in the stand just jumping for joy. Everybody was cheering. Then once everyone around me realized that that was my son, them screaming with us. It was just the proudest moment ever. I couldn't believe that he had scored his first MLS goal so early on in his career. First goal, yeah, I mean, I was kind of forced to show emotion too, just because just because of the fans and all the adrenaline. But that was, that was a crazy moment. But I think that not the action of scoring that goal, but hearing Hearing the fans yell my name afterwards when you know the announcer goes Jalen, they go Neil. That was crazy. I was getting ner I was getting chills like on the field playing. Yeah, that feeling is like addictive. You know, kind of want that again. So after his goal, to just to see his smile, which was so genuine and so just. Like I knew he was proud of himself. That, that, that meant so much and that was what made me cry, was just seeing his genuine smile. Definitely after I had surgery or I just wasn't able to play, like obviously going to the stadium every single day and seeing your teammates train, it obviously takes a blow on you. Um, it's not easy to see and it's not easy to deal with, especially when you focus your whole life around soccer and just you just want to play, that's all. And you're not able to do that. It's definitely tough. But like I said, keeping keeping a solid, you know, circle around you definitely helps with that, people to get you through it. I think it taught me to work on the person I am outside of soccer. Not really have that label of Jalen the soccer player, but just Jalen Neal. It's getting back to my roots kind of and taking my mind off of soccer for a little bit. It's so nice to see you all here gathered today to celebrate the official opening of my own mini pitch here in Lakewood. This field to me represents what hard work and dedication can bring to you as well as others around you. There's going to be many difficulties you'll face, but embracing those moments and knowing you have a story behind that, trying to make it a best-selling novel anyone will try to read any day. Sorry. So this, this means a lot to me right now. Um, just happy to see my son smiling and the joy he's feeling right now, especially the emotion he showed during his speech today.
He re really felt it and he wanted kids to feel it too. Since his whole life, him and his brother wanted to open some kind of sports complex, something in Lake where they can go play and do their soccer. And he had, finally got a chance to do it and he was so excited to get this project started. And he was happy to get it completed. I'm just happy for him and uh, happy for the city of Lakewood to have this. To see something from an idea come to life and have this event today is a very momentous time in our city. Just came out to support Jalen's big day, you know, what he's doing for the community, his small core. Now, it's been a project in the works for a while now, and it's just a great day to see the community enjoying a, a court that's, you know, been supported by Jalen. It's just, it just shows the character he is, you know. He wants to get back to the community and he wants to help others. And now that he's in the platform to do so, I think it's amazing what he's doing here. I just thought it was like a great idea to bring a mini pitch to the city because I've never seen like an actual built-in soccer field here. Just like knowing people can enjoy that field when I'm not even there. Like I can be in a different country, just not even have my mind on it, and people will be there playing. So that part makes me happy. I would say in the near future, my, a dream would be bringing another championship to LA Galaxy, World Cup games especially, so I'm just working my hardest towards that. He's actually dancing at the moment. I, I spent 50 coins. You know who I bought? I don't, oh yeah, for 50 coins. He's doing a stinky leg on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> that dog scares me, man. I got a diamond tester in the car, but it it's, it's not charged, so. No, Spider-Man, I mean, he can, he can, he can go, you know, he can fly, he's a crazy superhero, you know? Hey, uh, Beyond the Box, just know. It's a, it's a podcast featuring uh, three beautiful young men. He, that, he, he's one of them? Beyond the Box, coming out soon. All platforms, just let it be known. All platforms. You feel me?